Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with how to make deli style roast turkey for sandwiches. That's right, I am very excited to be sharing just how simple and easy it is to roast and slice your own turkey breast for sandwiches, which might not seem like something worth doing until you actually do it. And no, enjoying fresh turkey sandwiches once a year after Thanksgiving is not enough. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. By placing one turkey breast in a baking dish or pan just slightly larger than the piece of turkey itself. And yes, this is bone in, skin on, which are how these are almost always sold. And by the way, this is called a split breast or a half breast, since it's only one half of a full breast. And the first thing we'll do is take a sharp small knife and we'll poke our turkey breast through the skin anywhere between 27 and 54 times. And we don't need to go too deep. Okay, we're just basically piercing the skin. And not only is that going to allow our seasonings to penetrate a little deeper, but it's also going to help some of the fat under the skin render out. And then once that's been properly poked, we'll go ahead and drizzle over about a tablespoon of olive oil, and then use our tongs to rub that around and flip it over, until hopefully pretty much all the surface area is covered. And what that's going to do is help our salt and seasoning stick, which is what we're going to be mixing up next. So what we'll do once our breast is glistening beautifully with oil, is let that sit out at room temp for about 15 to 20 minutes just to sort of take the chill off before roasting. And while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and mix up our not so secret herbs and spices, which is gonna start with a whole bunch of kosher salt. Okay, we're gonna use exactly one teaspoon per pound of meat. We will also add a lot of freshly ground black pepper, as well as some dried thyme, some dried rosemary, and some dried oregano. And then we will finish up a little touch of smoked paprika. And yes, if you want this spicy, you could add a little bit of cayenne, which I didn't do. And for that, I am sorry. But anyway, what we'll do is give that a thorough mixing. And then assuming our breast is warmed up on the counter for, like I said, about 15 to 20 minutes, we can go ahead and apply all of our salt and seasoning mixture to both sides and the edges, and of course, any nooks and crannies. And yes, in case you're wondering, you can use fresh herbs here, but I'm trying to simulate the turkey you find in your finest delis. And they almost always use only dry herbs, which tend to provide a little bit of a deeper flavor than the fresh version. But having said that, suit yourself. I mean, you are after all the Bruce Lee of your freshly roasted turkey, who, by the way, was born in San Francisco. But no matter what you use, make sure you apply all the seasoning mixture. I know it seems like a lot, but trust me, that's one of the secrets. And yes, we definitely want to end with the skin side up. And that's it. Once our turkey breast has been seasoned, we will add about a half inch of cold fresh water to the bottom of our baking dish, which is going to help our turkey stay nice and moist. Plus, later on, that's going to provide some flavorful broth in case we wanted to serve this hot and do a little bit of gravy. And that's it, once that's been watered, it is ready to transfer into the center of a 450 degree oven. But as soon as we close the door, we're gonna immediately reduce our heat to 300 and roast this low and slow for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes or until an internal temperature of between 145 and 150. According to me, officially it should be 150 or more. And if everything goes according to plan, it should look something like this. In other words, absolutely gorgeous. And at this point, if you wanted to let this rest for a few minutes before slicing it up and eating it hot, no one, including me, would blame you. And it would be amazing. But we are going to slice this cold for sandwiches, which is why I'm going to transfer it into this smaller dish to cool. And of course, do not, under any circumstances, throw away these cooking liquids. Okay, we definitely want to save those in case we're going to make a gravy. Or later, after we remove the meat from the rib cage, we will add that to the stock we can make with the bones. And that's it. Once our turkey breast has cooled down, We'll go ahead and wrap that up and pop it into the fridge until it's thoroughly chilled before we try to slice it. Which for me, in the spirit of full disclosure, was overnight. In any event, once that's cold, we'll go ahead and pull it out. And I'm going to grab a knife and cut off a few slices so I can see how I did. And yes, if you want, you can peel off the skin before you slice it. But not me, because there's so much flavor you're going to lose. And because of our cooking method and that we poke the skin beforehand, that skin has 0% flabbiness and 100% deep, satisfying savoriness. So if you're asking me, it's leave the skin to win. All right, this turkey was just so flavorful and still moist with a beautiful tender texture. And if we wanted, we could just slice this all right off the carcass, but it probably is easier on several levels if we remove most of the meat from the rib cage. And I'll start with the rib cage side up and the breastbone side down. And I'll start cutting in a few inches all the way around, which is actually not that hard unless you're self-conscious about blocking the camera. But anyway, we'll go all the way around till we get to the breastbone, basically keeping that knife flat between the carcass and the meat. And please don't worry about trying to get too close. 
In fact, it's actually better if you don't go all the way to the bone, since there's some connective tissue there. Because what we can do when that big, beautiful piece of perfect meat is removed is go back and simply pull off any of the meat we left on the carcass, leaving any connective tissue attached to the bone. And of course, we can save those pieces to make sandwiches with, or maybe mix up some turkey salad, or we can just chop it up and add it to the soup I really hope you're going to make with those bones. Oh yeah, there are several good things happening here at once. Okay, so we have our big, beautiful boneless piece to slice for sandwiches, which I'm going to go ahead and cut up in a minute, right after I transfer any bones and scraps into a saucepan, so I can make a nice stock that later I will add some rice to, plus those bonus pieces of turkey, and I'm going to have myself a pretty nice soup. And you know what soup is good with? Sandwiches. So let's go ahead and thinly slice our freshly roasted breast. And as you can see, I like to do this fairly thin, since surface area usually equals flavor. Okay, you remember when Kramer got the meat slicer? And of course, this is going to work with whatever spices you want. But I do highly recommend adding that little touch of smoked paprika. Okay, I actually don't really like smoked turkey that much. Because it's generally too smoky and tastes like ham. And if I want ham, I'll eat ham. But the smoked paprika provides just a little touch of smoke that's just barely perceivable and adds that little bit of certain something without overpowering everything else. And I would have been happy eating this as is right off the board. But I thought I would end with one of my favorite all-time turkey sandwiches, which is freshly roasted turkey with cream cheese, a rhubarb jam, some baby arugula on toasted sourdough, which in the business is called the Chef John, named after its humble, unassuming creator. And that, my friends, is without a doubt one of the greatest turkey sandwiches in existence. Right, that highly seasoned extra peppery turkey works perfectly with that cream cheese. Plus we have that little bit of tart sweetness from the rhubarb jam, playing off that slightly bitter peppery arugula and black pepper on the turkey is just an incredible combination of flavors. But no matter what you do with yours or what kind of sandwich you end up making, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.